Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, so I already introduced myself. My name is Mshila Sio. Um, I was, where's the clicker? <laughs> so Mshila Sio. Um, I, was, I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. This is a picture of my family. Uh, that's me at the end. So I, I grew up in, um, I was bullied as a child, as you can see. Uh, the problem with being bullied by, by women is you, you can't hit back. <laughs> you have to take it. <laughs> and um, I, th I, th I grew up in incredible privilege. And that doesn't mean we were wealthy or not wealthy, but we're not poor either. But it means we were happy kids. We didn't have to worry about water or food. And judging by the picture and myself, you can tell we never worried about food. <laughs> and it gave me an opportunity to grow up and be a goofball and... Just, um, just grow up as a child, which is, is not typical of the, the, the regular African child story. Um, but just before I continue, there's, there's a group I want to acknowledge in the crowd. There's um, seated amongst you, there's 25 Africans from 19 different countries. They are an elite group. They, they, they're part of the Young African Leaders Initiative, which is uh, uh, President Obama's initiative, and uh, invited pretty much the cream of the crop in Africa in terms of entrepreneurs and public leaders. And um, um, some of them are seated here. Hey, guys. <laughs> What's up? So if, if you wish you had met um, Nelson Mandela or Angare Mathai, you may be sitting next to the next Nelson Mandela. And um, we, those 50,000 applications for, to get these 25 or 500. So, I keep asking myself, how, I mean, does Obama, is he serious about me? Like, why would he invite me into the United States? Why, the, why would the U.S. State Department um, include us into this program? And I think it's because of what the vision we have for our country. Again, that's me being a goofball. Uh, in Africa, I mean, if you don't have your basic necessities, you don't have the opportunity to be a child. And I think the reason I, I'm here specifically is because I'm dealing with two particular things. What do you people think of when you see those two words? What, do you, what images come to your head? This is what you do, this is a Google search. It's all poverty and dirty water and, which is, we want to tell a new African story, but currently that's the situation on the ground in many places. So when I tell you I was privileged, it's because I never had to go to the river to pick water. And if I did, the water was clean, it was beautiful. And that's not the situation now. It's much worse. So a little bit of our story. These are my business partners. That's uh, Pedro on the right and Bianca. Pedro is an, is an European entrepreneur and he sparked my interest in um, a certain technology and, and adapting it to, to Africa. And um, it, he's the reason I, I got started in, in, in the business I'm doing right now. And um, <laughs> Having, being in Dartmouth has given us an incredible experience. We have realized, one, how little I know about the rest of Africa, and two, how similar our problems are in America and, and in Africa, in and this is in terms, of, in terms of water. These challenges you see here, the, the slide is titled Developed World, but we have exactly the same problems in our cities. The infrastructure is horrible. It's, it's, it's a very high energy intensive industry. So you'll find if, if people don't supply us with power every day, they're not going to supply power to purify water or to, or to treat wastewater. But then on top of your problems, we have our own, which you don't have. And this, this is where the, the biggest challenge is. Most people, well, I'll say a majority of the people in Africa will have, don't have access to safe water. It's contaminated, um, causes a lot of the diseases. Over 50% of hospitalizations in Africa are water related. Uh, there's basically a lack of funding, infrastructure is very poor. Most, you can't, piping, uh, I mean, water to a village is just not, it's not a viable option. And if we continue in this trend, this is what's going to happen. Right now, the number is at about a billion people who do not have access to clean water. So either we are, we are failing or we're not succeeding fast enough. And this is, this is why I get up every day. Because we have a solution to this problem. A socially responsible technology that's environmentally friendly and 
will benefit the people on the ground that work on it. So we use um, uh, what we call uh, aquatic plants or macrophyte plants to purify water. It's an energy-free technology and it supplies very clean water to pretty much anyone who has access to the system. So we, um, our, our technology floats these plants on water which allows them to provide oxygen to their roots and allows that, that allows bacteria to thrive which break down contaminants, break down the bad organisms and the system consumes those, those from the water. So you can go to a contaminated lake, river, and it's a low cost system. It uh, doesn't require any chemicals, which means you can implement it almost anywhere on the continent. Uh, again, it's inspired by nature. We're, we're actually taking what nature is capable of doing it, of doing and just enhancing it a little bit with our technology. Uh, so very sustainable system. Because it doesn't require energy, uh, you, can, you can go to any remote area in Africa and implement it. If, if you don't have energy, you, do, you can't use any of the Western technologies. If you don't have the technical expertise, you can't do it. You can't go down to the village with your chemical engineer and have him sitting there, which means you, you can't supply them with clean water. It uh, requires very low maintenance, basically just gardening, and it means it's very cheap to maintain. So if we, if we implement a system in, in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, we can walk away and the people can, can keep running it. It's very versatile which means it can be put into integrated systems, including here in America. And, and uh, yeah, we can upgrade conventional systems as they are. So it doesn't have to be just for new technologies. And it's really high quality. The water we get there, it removes the pathogens in, in water. Fecal matter, which causes diarrhea, which is the second biggest killer right now in Africa. It's, these are preventable things. We don't have to worry about that three billion if we, if we find solutions that work. So this, this, uh, this is a story, an incredible story. Um, my partner Pedro, I showed you before, he lived in Mali for about three years. And during that period, uh, two children died in his car. And they died because they didn't have access to clean water. And that kind of inspired him to, to implement this project. So it's a project that uh, this system he, you see here supplies water for 8,000 people. The, the social economic benefits of this project were incredible. So the, the water you're seeing there is downstream from a city, so it's, it's very polluted. But they, they don't have another option, so they drink it. So from the time they started using this water, they had a 75% reduction in infant mortality, and cholera was eliminated in the area. And then the water they drink from this filter, it exceeds EU water quality standards. So they drink cleaner water than I do in Nairobi. That's exciting for me. And what's even more exciting is that it's independently managed. So if, you, if, if we walk away, they can run the system. They don't need government funding. They don't need corrupt politicians. They don't need chemicals. Once we teach them how to do it, we walk away. They have clean water for the rest of their lives. And then the technology is um, it's a single innovation, but it has m many facets. So we can actually use that to treat wastewater as well. In Africa, about 90% of the wastewater goes into the rivers untreated, into the lakes, into, because it's just not, it's not an option. But this here is a very cheap way to do it, so that whoever is downstream is not suffering from our wastewater. And this is what the future needs to look like this. The reason people are not treating the wastewater in Africa is just too expensive. We want to make it attractive for them to treat their wastewater. So no, you're not only recycling water that you can use again, but you can use the plants for ethanol, for biomass, so that what is now a liability, all these sewage treatment systems, they cost a lot of money, chemicals, it becomes an asset, because they can give you money back. So let's work together. So right now in Kenya, I'm working with uh, Kisi University and, and Kenyatta University, and we have partners right here in the streets in, in Colorado, uh, University of New Hampshire, there's, you know, we're, we're starting a revolution. This is just the beginning. Uh, so this is our company, this is what we do. And we want to move ahead globally, we want to expand, we want to treat water in every country available on the planet. Yeah. But we're starting with Africa, we love Africa the most. <laughs> so, and, um, we, we, we're engaging people on the ground as we're working because we don't want them to be dependent on us. We're, 
democratizing uh, access to water so that everyone has access to water. It shouldn't be something you have to rely on someone else for. It's like air. Why do you need someone else to provide you with your water and you've got a river downstream? So thank you for your time. Those are our contacts. Please do get in touch with us for projects, for internship. If you want to come visit Kenya and work with us, we're going to change the world. Thank you.